thing that caught me off guard aside from the technology and all this shit when he's like you're Herod's race this is Herod's case go see him and then we meet Herod <laughs> yes <laughs> yes we do <laughs> guys you know who it is what's going on when it's happening where it's at and why we're here today how you doing it is i the sublimely magnificent big ugly himself omari ellis feo grande on youtube and i am back here once again to talk about movies that the one of us or the other hasn't seen this week you know we'll get into it but i can't do this alone because you know we're trading movies back and forth we're having this dialogue and you need at least two people for a dialogue and i can think of hardly anyone better than one of my best friends in the world el director himself bill smith Hey, what's going on, buddy? Thank you for having me, as always. It's a pleasure. Uh, this is a weird one this week. Um, this is kind of a this is kind of the litmus test that I have with my friends. Not to put any pressure on you, of not not in a good way or a bad way, but just kind of like how weird, mm -hmm. how like how much do our tastes align? This is on the weird end of, of the of my spectrum that I personally find great um, in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. um, but it is it is a divisive movie in that regard. And so feel free to have. I mean, maybe I only know of one other person that has very much enjoyed this movie. <laughs> Fair. After I've shown it to him of our age demographic. Gotcha. Okay. Yes. And what movie is that? Good, sir. Oh, well, yes, I guess. Well, um, you would probably know from the title oh, of this video yes. when you click it. But the, <laughs> the movie is Jesus Christ Superstar. It's a film from 1973. Now our oldest film so far that we've covered officially. True. And it's going to be, I would imagine it's going to be tough to get older than this, but we will probably we might get there at some point it is originally a broadway play broadway musical i mean really technically i guess it's an opera i'm yeah, not I, I, i've seen I'm it described as, I, i've seen it described as a rock opera i mean there are no <laughs> there is no dialogue mm -hmm. there is speak singing Yes. At, at moments no, baby, with music behind it, mm -hmm. but there is no dialogue. So yes. I believe that means it's an opera. It, I'm leaning more toward opera. I think we had a similar conversation during Hamilton because we're like, there's very little because they had like rap instead of speak singing, mm -hmm. but they also don't have. But they do have some dialogue in well, that, don't I'm, they? Very little. It, or is it, it like, still like. Yeah, it's still almost Sing constantly a song uh, okay. and, and i've seen opera operas that are you know undeniably an opera that do have spoken lines everyone like very little but like okay. oh hey here's i'm gonna say this probably for like emphasis within the scene like oh shit they said no <laughs> they didn't sing that they wanted you to pay attention to that line mm -hmm. so stuff like that so depends on the thing but i'd say i'm leaning more toward opera definitely with this one like i said sure. i saw it described as a rock opera and when i heard it i'm like rock opera sounds right to me right yeah that sounds that sounds correct um it is 1973 it is directed by norman jewison mm. it is a tim rice andrew lloyd weber production back in the day in andrew lloyd weber's early days i'm not too familiar with his entire body of work. Jesus Christ at Superstar point, is Weber? Fair enough. Yes. At some point, they separate. At one point, they are a team. Okay. Andrew Lloyd Webber does the music. Tim Rice does the lyrics. Gotcha. At some point, they separate, and things are no longer credited as Andrew Lloyd Webber and Tim Rice. They kind of pick and chose. I believe Andrew Lloyd Webber got the lot of it. Yeah. got the majority of it this is credited as a tim rice piece oh but it is a andrew Lo it is a tim rice andrew lloyd weber piece there so as we've just expressed this is 
a musical. This yes. is now our second musical. Mm-hmm. It is it is not a metaphor in the title. This movie is about Jesus Christ. Um how much I am, of a superstar he was. And how much of a superstar he was. This is this is a 70s movie and it is very 70s in that regard. <laughs> I am not a religious person. I will say that up front. Same. I do not believe that Jesus Christ was the son of God. I'm going to say that on my on this podcast. Um just to just to lay out all my cards on the table and I love this movie. It is I would like to start with how I originally saw it. It was one of it was probably my mother's favorite musical. Okay. I can remember whatever mode of audio we were listening to yes she had a copy of this soundtrack if we were if we were in the early days of my life when my mom was still on records we had a vinyl of this soundtrack then it went to tape deck and she went and got this soundtrack then she had a cd in her car late in her life when i was a child this is the first musical that i saw in person at the fox because they were touring and my mother had to go and so and so she took me nice i'm positive i saw the film but i do not remember the first time i saw it until Fast forward till I was about 20 years old. Okay. And I believe I found it in a, for those, anybody who would watch this that's not familiar with St. Louis, I will say a vintage vinyl like store. And that's a name of a particular <laughs> store here in St. Louis. But if you can imagine those types of independent record stores um, that that carry a ton of vinyls, but they also buy and sell people's weird DVDs and obscure DVDs. And you can usually find a halfway decent anime collection there mm-hmm. of, of random anime movies and shows on DVD and then eventually Blu-ray. I found this on DVD for not a ton of money mm-hmm. and I bought it and I went home with some friends and watched it. And I take that original statement back. There are actually two people that love this movie. Uh, shout out to Kate and Lucian. They, we, we all watched it and something it, it, I, I knew the music because that had played in the background of my entire life, but the performances of Judas and then secondarily Jesus, but primarily Carl Anderson as Judas. It connects with me on a level that maybe no other performance connects with me. I, I can't explain it. I did not, I did not look up the names for the actors in this movie. Are you talking about the Judas from the movie? Yes. Okay. Yes. This is, this is my watching it as an, as an adult. Damn Um, great job. So, so that is, that is the nuts and bolts. Since that moment of rewatching it again as an adult, I have I have watched this movie more times than I can count. I have eventually shown it to a lot of friends. Uh, most of the time it equals a little bit of dis either they because it's got so it's got it's got it's got a lot of things. It's got some great performances, but it's also got a lot of camp. It's it's a it's very clearly an independent film. This is, it's a very, it, it starts at a very weird concept <laughs> yeah. of all of these fucking 70s hippies showing up on a bus at the actual, at the actual ruins of Jerusalem and basically acting out a play. Like, like it's, it, it's almost the concept of a bunch of like these like, 50 hippies decided, you know, it would be cool. Let's travel to Jerusalem, 
first let's write a musical about Jesus and then let's travel to Jerusalem and perform that musical to nobody. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And then we saw that happen as a fly on the wall. That's almost what this film is. And we were the ghost seeing the ghost lights. (laughs) So it is, it is a hard one. It is a hard one to show someone sometimes. Mm. I've said my piece. What were you expecting? All right. So as far as why I hadn't seen it, uh, it was a religious musical. And while I'm technically religious, I'm not the hardest practitioner of religion. I guess that's the best way I can put it. I don't follow the to the T. You're not a church stuff. goer. No, it causes me physical pain, which some Christians might say that's a sign of something, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, but the no. seats are really uncomfortable. Well, it's more the acoustics in a lot of churches and the way they are made actually like hurts my ear. Like certain things will happen in my ear. Like you know you rubbed your fingers on like a microphone that little like static. It's yeah. like that and I can feel it inside my ear. So mm. I don't really go to church because ninety percent of churches I go to that happens. So you know, you know what that is in your ear. That's the, the Holy devil. Spirit. No, that's the devil. <laughs> that's the devil. You gotta go to church to get that out. No, dog. I'm, I'm staying feel, home. What you're feeling is is the devil trying to claw back inside of you as it's getting pulled out by the Holy Spirit. Maybe. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I, I like I said, maybe. Like I said, <laughs> like I said, some Christians may say that might be a sign of something. Uh, but, maybe. But so I'm you're religious, person. but you don't. Yeah. But you don't. You well, don't yeah. participate actively. Yes. Also, I had been in Godspell, and when I was in Godspell in high school, uh, a lot of people were saying it was like Jesus Christ Superstar in the sense that it was a musical about the life of Jesus Christ. Although I'd say Jesus Christ Superstar is more about the death of Jesus Christ with a little bit of life thrown in. But it's like the final, like Jesus Christ Superstar is like the final moments, if you will, or final few weeks. Yeah, it's, it, we're like watching the last week and a half or something. Yeah, like that. was, yeah. yeah. where fucking Godspell, you have a bit more of that time and then the finality. Mm-hmm. But so I wasn't e- ever against it. I had heard the Jesus Christ superstar, but that's really all I had heard. Not even like the whole song at once, at least. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause I had heard some things. It turns out, but I hadn't put them with Jesus Christ, but with the only thing I could really associate with the play being that little fluffy part of that, eh, I can miss this. Now, as far as to what, I, that, so that's why I hadn't seen it. It was never anything actively against it. It was just like, if I watch it, I'll watch it. Kept kind of putting it on the back burner. Kind of happy mm-hmm. I did now because we had an episode that we could make out of this. Uh, <laughs> but what I was expecting, I wasn't really sure. I have. Two people who are on, like, my best friend's list of, like, you know, whatever, that highly rank it and call it their favorite musical. You and one of my friends down here. I believe I've referenced wow. him. I believe I've referenced him on whatever we want as Fluffles, if I ever mentioned the name Fluffles, him. So Fluffles uh, and you both are the two people and the only two people that really told me they like it let alone told me that it's their favorite musical yeah uh so i'm like well i have two really good friends that i share a lot of things in common with fluffles like yourself is uh white but he also he my doppelganger because he and i share a shit ton of common interests and Mm -hmm. a lot of personality traits and stuff like that so we joke around about being doppelgangers so (laughs) i'm like if he really likes it and then you really like it as well and you and i share a lot of interest and stuff also and the whole brotherly bond thing i'm like i was kind of excited i'm like clearly these guys highly like it i just always put it on the back burner because i'm like i don't feel like learning about god today i already know enough 
<laughs> I once knew all the books in the Bible by heart. Yeah. So, spoilers, everybody, for Jesus Christ Superstar, Jesus gets crucified. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, he does. Um. So, yeah, I was excited and just ready to watch. I didn't really know what to expect. I think I expect... If it wasn't for the fact that, like I said, the two of you like it as much as you do, mm-hmm. I kind of part of I probably would have expected to be bored because all I knew of it was Jesus Christ Superstar, and I'm like uh, whatever. But I use the term a lot, like you know, when you get hurt or something, you like or something shocks you, like Jesus Christ or something like that. I, a right. lot of times, I will say Jesus Christ Superstar, like for if it's more than a Jesus Christ. Just it's to a give Jesus it a Christ sauce. superstar. Like, Jesus Christ superstar. What the fuck were you thinking? You know, <laughs> that kind of thing. So, uh-huh. yeah, that's what I was expecting. Right on, right on. And and we, I, I guess we kind of covered why you hadn't seen it. Yeah. Uh, so let's go into your sit. How'd you watch it? All right. So I'm watching it. And, you know, initial reaction, you see the desert. And then you hear that opening guitar riff. That, I can't do it off the top of my head, but you know what I'm mm-hmm. talking about. You memorized yeah. the movie. I'm like, wait a minute. All right. Maybe yeah. this is going to be a lot more cool. And then the is fucking, this going to be funky? Right. And then the bus shows up, as yeah. you mentioned. And I was just, what the? What the hell is going on? All right, I'm confused. What's happening? And I'm not mad, but this is happening. And then fucking Judas's opening song in that movie that I was just, I was like, this is sweet. I like how I put opening song is sweet, parentheses, cool in my <laughs> thing so that I knew what I, I mean by it sweet. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, oh, that's sweet. <laughs> no, yeah. it was, it was awesome, and I was just ready to go. And then you cut to fucking Calliophus and his deep ass voice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, this is, this is, this is something. And then just. He is dangerous. <laughs> he is dangerous. <laughs> oh, you yeah. can lie your face. <laughs> like, and, and then he had another guy that was a walking stereotype with it. I'm in the beanie, the beanie, baby. He's like, oh my god. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I loved it. I, I like, well, I don't know, spoilers. I enjoyed <laughs> what I was yeah. watching. And I didn't expect. There was a lot of anachronisms in there, I believe is the term, that I was not expecting. Anachronisms, I think, is when you have something from the wrong time period in there, i.e. the bus or the plane tanks. or the tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At first with or the bus, the... with the yeah, because with the bus, I'm like, okay, maybe that's just how they were setting it up. And then later you just see Judas running in the desert from tanks, and I'm like... Why are there tanks here? And then the jets fly over his head. Yeah. It's just, I don't know. It's, yeah, it's one of those things that it's, I, it, it, it's, I love it. Like it's, I can see the, the, the seventies, probably like stoner baked brain of the director being like, yeah, man, it's like a, it's like a metaphor. Cause like he's being pushed to betray Jesus. And so we can get to, we can get like three tanks here. And they're chasing <laughs> him, they're cornering him. And then it wasn't until the tri- like halfway through the trial of Jesus or like his second or third trial where I see and I finally noticed they have fucking guns in their hands. And I was yeah, like, the, where the, the fuck? The whole the whole movie, like <laughs> half of the guards are carrying like little submachine guns. <laughs> and I'm just like, what? And then like I said, I had heard the this must die, must die, this Jesus must die. That was the other thing I had heard. I did not realize that was the other part of Jesus Christ Superstar. That mm-hmm. probably would have made me look at that song in a better like, you know, in my head. Because that I'll just love it. The da 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 this Jesus I think, must die. I think both I think both of Mary Magdalene's songs were like actual like pop hits. Oh. At the time. 
uh, and and maybe played in in gotcha. your background at some point. If they did, sure. I would not have been paying that mm-hmm. much attention, especially with how slow those songs are if they're coming on the radio. She sings them beautifully in the movie and in the context, and does a great job acting. Slow, slow and beautiful is not necessarily my casual listening right. forte. That's yeah, all I'm I mean, saying. <laughs> if I'm if I'm honest, she is I, I feel like there could have been somebody better there. It's not that she's doing a bad thing uh-huh. at all, but uh, she she is one of the original Broadway cast. Okay. Uh, that they basically came almost straight from doing doing that on the to stage Jerusalem to set to, up their set. to to filming this <laughs> this film. And that is what happened. Well, uh, <laughs> honestly, a good portion of it. A good portion of the film is the original Broadway cast. One of the few standouts is Carl Anderson. He is one of the few people that they actually recast. I don't know the story behind why. Uh, I think it's Ben Vereen, who I've heard that name before. Yeah. But I can't think right now what he has been in. Um, I'm bad with names as it is. But I don't know the reason why he wasn't in the film version yeah because they found because they found that they found the judas that that was better but yes (laughs) that's that's the thing is that i don't know if he was better but damn fantastic he's he's fantastic he has to be better well there is no one no i'm just saying i don't i haven't seen ben burin do judas but he nobody could possibly do this better there is no doing this better. Like that is the. I will agree. That is, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's. I will agree. Heaven on heaven on their minds, which is the opening song. You have you have his two little bits in. You have his one little bit in. What's happening? When they're down in the caves at first, what's the buzz? Tell, tell me, me what's, what's happening. happening. And he tell and he's like, and he tries to tell Jesus what he was thinking about during heaven on their minds. Yeah, this whole story for the audience, if if you listen and you haven't seen this movie, we are we are mostly seeing Judas's perspective of this story. We do see Jesus's perspective kind of past the halfway point but a lot of this in the in the in the in the disciples and the jesus entourage we're kind of seeing the camera is often if it's not viewing judas it's kind of viewing the world through judas's eyes yeah like one of those will you mend me jesus christ or what's the buzz where he's just sitting there with all the cult of personality around Jesus, because that this movie definitely is a good crash course in cult of personality and just the way people just flock to this man. And this yeah. is one of the scenes... And then break and drop him, drop yeah. him like a bad yeah, habit Yeah, like uh, the Touch Me Jesus song. I don't remember the name of it, but I think it's Simon. He was he eventually starts doing like some fucking weird... He was going crazy, but when the other people are talking, you just see Judas that, leaning up that against the... Is crazy. And you just see yeah. Judas leading up against the wall like... <laughs> like what what is going on yeah. here yeah there's a specific like, shot of like y'all have gone crazy <laughs> y'all lost your minds <laughs> i gotta do something yeah because he's like you realize the louder we get that they don't like us as it is they will fucking hunt you down because yeah. cause even if you ain't calling yourself a king you're not telling nobody else not to you're right. just saying yeah you call me a king He's thinking any minute we can all start being slaughtered. Yeah. They don't like us when we look like we have any power. And us saying one of us has superpowers and is a king is a bad thing. (laughs) And Jesus is like, but God is good. (sighs) (laughs) And then you talk about all this stuff. And then you got the relationship with a prostitute. I don't have a problem with prostitutes, but you got to look at the optics. And that's, that's, the, that's what he's saying in uh um when he comes in i think uh, 
they yeah were in the cave everything's all right <laughs> yes everything's, everything's fine good. yeah that uh one. during that song yeah yeah, he, hey, he, hey he, woman, <laughs> <laughs> your fine ointments, brand new and expensive, should have been saved for the poor. Yeah, he also was like, we could have been 200 pieces or more. That's the other Why? thing he was saying. Like, he's like, hmm. what What about actually giving to the poor? Jesus Jesus, is like, poor people are going to exist regardless. You got to at least keep something for yourself. He wasn't like hoarding the money or anything. They weren't saying mm-hmm. Jesus was greedy or anything like that. But he's like. I hear you, man, but we got to live, too. <laughs> right. Which I believe, if I remember from, from my confirmation classes, these are all the standard Jesus parables in that la- in those in those final moments of his of his pilgrimage like these like Tim Rice is pulling directly uh, um, the, these moments out of the Bible. But it's 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 the the rhythm and the the, the music and the and the lyrics and mostly the performances of these two, Judas and Jesus, going back and forth. Oh, yeah. To your earlier point about this being mainly from Judas's perspective. So this is not only our second musical, but it's our second musical where it has a titular character who technically is the secondary viewpoint we see. We mainly see the villain's viewpoint the whole time. Because with Hamilton, you're mainly in ha- Ed, fucking Aaron Burr, talking about alexander hamilton. right like he's the narrator he's the yeah and then yeah obviously you see hamilton's personal life too but it's mainly aaron burr i mean the dude's the guy in the silhouette for the fucking play it's the aaron burr show and judas is the main focus of jesus christ superstar yeah <laughs> and oh he, yeah and parallels is, yeah so parallels. <laughs> i just thought i was like ah yeah that's a good way and with what's his name being a big musical nut i wonder if he thought about that when he thought about making hamilton oh yeah no that's yeah that's totally possible it's <laughs> totally possible because that is a good narrative choice you know who the villain is let me put you in his thing but not also not necessarily make you feel bad for him but you but you at least know why. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Uh, this it's so so. Carl Anderson, Carl Anderson, Carl Anderson for yes. me. And then it is Jesus's song on the mountain of Gethsemane. Yeah, that's his. That's his big number. Like obviously he has a bunch to do in this musical, but that is his. Yeah, and it's very, it's very that seventies high the, register, the, the, the watch me Bee Gees die style. Yes, I had seen a play version of that. At least those lines, it was not as belty. At least to start, because it was you played D anD D, right? Mm-hmm. It was a video that someone did for a meme, and it was like when the wizard takes five damage, and it cuts to him like, all right. I'll die. <laughs> Just watch me die. <laughs> See how I... And he hit a real high note in that play version. <laughs> like Jesus Christ, but it mm-hmm. <laughs> like Jesus Christ superstar. That was a high note. Uh but <laughs> he hits it. And I so I'm like, wait, is this that song? Is this that part? Cause I think Fluffles, who had sent me that meme, had mentioned that it's from Jesus Christ Superstar. But again, okay. yeah. I had seen it from a play version that wasn't nearly as rock heavy, so it still didn't put in a, I have to watch this in my head, because I'm like, yeah, this is... <laughs> I, I'm sure it's fantastic, but I don't <laughs> think I'll enjoy it. <laughs> you know? Uh-huh. So that's what it was with the Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, that's what, another part of the reason why I hadn't seen it. But I had seen that, and I was like, and I got there, I'm like, damn, I like the way this guy does it too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just the whole when the wizard takes five damage. <laughs> that that uh, that would probably be in addition to everything Carl Anderson and Judas that Jesus song would probably be my other additional standout moment of the, of the film. Did you have any beyond performances, like specific numbers? What were some of your, your favorite numbers of the, of the movie? 
All right, so for a standout moment real quick, because I've, I've already mentioned the technology things and the things that just caught me off guard, like the tanks and plans. Yeah. Um, I love the last supper standoff between him and Judas. Like when he when mm. Judas comes in during the last, or or no, when he's like one of you betrayed. He's like, you know, say who the fuck you talking about? Yeah. Everyone <laughs> fucking knows you're talking about me, ain't you? Well, fucking do it. Why do you want me to? Fucking you know, betray I know, me? they know. Just say it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, just go ahead, go ahead and betray me. But why do you want me to betray you? This doesn't make sense. You better hurry up. <laughs> but the way they're like, yeah, well, just great. Another just singular like moment that like kind of caught me off guard was when they were doing the thing in the bazaar and everyone's like chilling or whatever in Nazareth or Jerusalem or wherever. And Jesus comes in and breaks shit and then just, should be a house of prayer. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> he is mad yeah like that dude's <laughs> notes that he hits like carl anderson like you said and jesus like the, the the notes that guy can get to the registers he needs to get to and him getting to them for the emphasis that they're looking for that's mm-hmm. fantastic as far as like favorite songs and stuff because that i know that wasn't one of the things but i did mention that or just because I wanted to keep track because I'm like, okay, I haven't seen this to say. Obviously, the namesake song, upon actually listening to the whole thing with both halves, I like Jesus Christ yeah. Superstar. It's pretty cool, and it's shorter than I it's shorter than I want it to be every time. <laughs> yeah. It cuts to that it cuts the crucifixion so fast. And I just I just want I want Carl Anderson in all of his cleaned up glory to to just to just continue rocking out that song for a little while. Yeah. But yeah, great, great song. Um, opening Judas song, uh, the damned for all time. Again, Carl Anderson, we already said, right? Yeah, that uh, one's that one's uh, that one. It's brutal, it's brutal because it follows it immediately follows his 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 hanging of himself. Yeah, um, yeah, the, the Judas's but, last song alive as well. Yeah, oh that's, god, the, um, the thing that caught me off guard aside from the technology and all this shit when he's like you're Herod's race this is Herod's case go see him and then we meet Herod <laughs> yes <laughs> yes we do and we completely jump genres I'm and like, we're suddenly and we're suddenly this? 100% deep dive into like a, se- a 70s pop art film where he is going to proceed to do a ragtime number do i have that genre accurate i have no idea what it is but it is so weird you are the christ yeah the, the, the great jesus, jesus christ. christ yeah i'd say it's kind of Turn like my ragtime. water into wine king of the jews so i have that listed as one of my favorite songs because it caught me off guard so mm-hmm. and it is catchy but just that was one of the things in my initial. I was just what the hell, man? This Herod guy is weird. Him and his whole crew. They were like, no, weirder. No, dial it up. <laughs> Piano player, are you okay with not wearing pants? Take the pants off. <laughs> I was just like, what? What am I watching? No, the pants are too much. How about chaps, but no pants? Yeah, Put some chaps like... on them. Look, that's one of the things I would say about the movie. It was a constant just questioning of what am I watching and not really in a bad way. It was just what mm-hmm. okay, what oh I Yeah. I did not know what to expect with this movie and sure enough I did not know what to expect with this movie because I would have been wrong <laughs> in the best way. But yeah, those are some of my favorite songs. Like we we said pretty much all of Judas's stuff. Uh, we we mentioned it very briefly. I do want to throw in there Simon's number. I oh, mean, yes. it is insane. It was but Simon, he right? He is he is amazing in it. Yeah, yeah I believe. Will you touch me? I believe you're correct because because Peter da, da, da. is the Peter is the denier. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I'll I deny believe... nothing. <laughs> and and yeah, and 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 Simon Simon was the was the was the was the preacher in that square for for jesus yeah yeah and it was weird that they worked in the apostles like they did because i was just like so we see judas and we see the crowds 
where the hell are the rest of the apostles? And I'm like, oh, they've been here the whole fucking time. And I just didn't realize it till the like, last supper. Like, oh, no, no, that was Simon. He did say Simon earlier. <laughs> oh, okay. They've been here the whole time. But this is literally just Jesus and Judas show. Other guys will show up when necessary. I always hoped that I'd be an apostle. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, right when they said that, like when that song starts, I'm that like. That song's always like, weird because it's like, wait a minute. You always wanted to be an apostle? And yeah. This guy only decided to start his journey like a year ago. Yeah, they're like, I always hoped that I'd be an apostle. And when I heard that line, that also, that reminded that me. That I could make it yeah, if that I reminded, tried. Yeah, that reminded me. I'm yeah. like, yeah, what happened to the apostles? Y'all are talking about them, so they should be here. And I'm like, oh, it's the apostles singing the song. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Then when we retire, we can write the Gospels so they'll still talk about us when we die. I mean, it's a very, it is a very um, self-aware song. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, that's exactly what happened. (laughs) It's like, you know what? Yeah, he's dead. Yeah, let's just write these things, spread the word. Talk about us forever. <laughs> so, what of the roles would you, if it, all right? So, let's not even say for this film, because we have the benefit of it being a musical. Let's take us back. It's two thousand and five. It's January. Yeah, Mister Pizarkowitz. Okay. runs into you in the hallway he's like oh hey mark uh uh just so you know you're the very first person i've told this to you secretly you're you're not a he's he's not told that same thing to like 500 people um, <laughs> but hey you're the first person you're getting inside information here spring musical it's gonna be jesus christ superstar auditions in a month and he walks away what does omari hope that he gets all right assuming i know the roles in the thing at that time I right yeah, probably... yeah this is in an alternate universe where you have seen this movie all right so i did mention something in a previous episode about when i was younger or just throughout my life when it comes to who would i play in these movies usually i will always put my eye on hey what prominent character that's already black am i gonna look at no that's just i'm just being honest yeah growing up and then you know as you get older you're like okay well you can play whatever role as long as it's not literally about i'm a black man right (laughs) but so obviously you see judas and i'm like leading black guy It's, and, the, it's the best part. And then his role kept going, and I'm like, yeah, I would love to do it. I Not even just, and obviously, this is assuming you know. Well, I was good enough to play Orange Gravello. I was a good enough singer in high school to play Orange Gravello. So, damn it, I can sing, I well, can no, sing, dude, a, like, I I can mean, sing a prominent role in a musical in that's 2005. Why I, that's, why no. I put us, that's why I put us back in 2005. Yeah. Because if you are, it, like, let's just be honest here. Let's not be frank. We're, we're, not, we're not trying to be braggy or anything. But if you auditioned for something in twenty in two thousand and five, you were going to get something. You knew that you were going to be getting something. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, and that's why that's why I transported us to two thousand. No, I, I like you it knew that you like weren't going to walk up to that call sheet and your name not be there. <laughs> in some fashion, there was enough people on the cast <laughs> yeah. like required for this thing that you knew that Mr. P was going to have to be looking for people likely he like turned Godspell, he turned Godspell a into a company piece i'm partially convinced because he had so many people where he's like i, I gotta have them on here in some <laughs> shape or fashion so i'm just gonna instead of having these specific roles company piece and only jesus and judas are <laughs> locked right <laughs> 
<laughs> and that way I can put Omari in this despite not really being who I want to do that role. Or... <laughs> right. <laughs> so I, mean, I get yeah, your point. Ideally, I'm not getting cast as Mr. Bushnick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just, it's because you, you work with the pool of talent that you have. <laughs> Hey, I, I, I've always joked around about like, you know, we did have some at least some favoritism going in our way from the teachers. And that's that was, that's one of the few good things about high school for, for us. sure. Um, but yeah, so Judas would probably be the main thing I would look at, especially because the way that man performed it. And I just I don't know. I apparently have this desire to play the villain in things <laughs> despite apparently not really fitting the villain repertoire um i would not want I mean, to play judas jesus. is judas is a villain of course but i guess but uh, you know not yeah he, he's played sympathetically but he's the villain mm -hmm. um i would not want to play jesus um and I didn't want to play Jesus in Godspell, actually. The notes, that, especially with the notes he has to hit. Like, I'm a okay singer or whatever. But I'm, but I know alpha. my range. Or, or yeah. baritone or bass. whatever. Or, yeah, yeah baritone, bass yeah. slash baritone. When I was in concert choir slash show choir, I was more of the baritone slash bass when they did, when they when they only had one other bass in the class, they're like, "Well, Omari, you're gonna have to also sing bass, so we can have more than one bass voice." Mm -hmm. So that's what. That, so even though Judas can get high up there too, he's not Jesus in this. And so yeah. I'm like, "Yeah, I could do the Judas thing, the Jesus thing." Those notes, I'm like, "I commend you," but damn, I I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't do that. Yeah, it's some it's some like some Bee Gees level shit. It's... Yeah, and if not and if not like the Judas, uh, guy, if this just seems like it'd be fun to do, I am blah, 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 the Caiaphas, uh, <laughs> and Simon, I guess the fun the Touch Me Jesus thing. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like, obviously, Judas is a great role. Um, uh, but but that's I, the one I, I most likely would get hit. Would get. I think I think you would most likely get cast as Simon. But I also think if you fully committed like that, like you could go to the same places that that dude <laughs> went to. You know well, what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I I know what you're saying enough to be like this is gonna be the character Bill's gonna say, <laughs> <laughs> Mister. Oh, I know a good role for you, Herbie Rainwater. He has a stupid grin on his face because he's stupid. <laughs> that was, <laughs> and I got I cast that. as Herbie Rainwater in that play. <laughs> it was a joke. But just the you 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 know what kind of roles I'm going to end up getting. Hell, I think you told me when I didn't want to be called Orange Scrivello for reasons that I won't get into. You're like, well, you know that's the role you're getting, right? <laughs> like, I don't want it. <laughs> well, that's the role you're getting. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like it's 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 not. It wasn't hard to look at our pool of talent and know what they were going to cast. I mean, occasionally they flipped around the girls yeah they would they would throw they would throw they would switch around the girls but with the men they pretty they were pretty much rubber stamped of like <laughs> this Type is cast. our three leading males and i can walk in there and i can be like okay uh what's his face is in auditioning i guess uh right because the because uh, what's his face is doing football um all right so i guess he's the lead um is there anybody fugly or old with a supporting role because that's going to be me um uh yeah if, if the is there goofy, anybody who's is there the anybody who's, or who's crazy <laughs> or like or like super dumb that's going to be omari um is, is there anybody who's supposed to be like a young cute boy that's going to be twain it, it was is always pretty easy yeah i remember being mad that i didn't get to see more 
because I always identified more as a Seymour than an Orange Scrivello. Uh, so I was just like, because they had hired or they had got two people who are better looking than me to be Seymour. Right. And I was like, no one's gonna believe that motherfucker's a Seymour. He looks too good to be a Seymour. I should be a Seymour. <laughs> I was weird in high school. I mean, it's uh, you know, high school is all. It's it, it's we're all Seymours. <laughs> we're all Seymours. Suddenly, at least. Or, or or were or were the the or they were the leading man. And yeah. Little Shop of Horrors doesn't have that character. <laughs> <laughs> they have Orange Gravello, who shouldn't like like they. Yeah. I mean, your alternate because they did A and B nights. Yeah. Your alternate should not have been Orange Gravello. He, I mean, he took it. He he made a choice. And if you're cool with your actor making a making a very strong choice from the traditional way that you are aware of that character being perceived and acting then like he he made you know he played a really cool uh yeah. like just kind of like he was just so cool he was a little crazy but he was just actually really cool yeah and, I and went, none of and I and none of his crazy stuff direction. really felt crazy it was just kind of like it was almost kind of like Hey, I'm kidding around. I'm like, ah, oh, I got you. Oh, I'm joking. That was kind of the tone of his orange yeah. gorilla. And yeah, you, you I, were, I, I went, the, you were crazy. I went the other way. I went full crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when my helmet fell off while I was like doing one of the things? I was supposed to be dying from a helmet being stuck on my head during it's just the gas. I fall on the ground, like, cause ha 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 ha. It's like a fake out death. And then I get up, don't. B. Well, when I snapped up, the helmet like half came off my head, and I had to like <laughs> snap my head to put it back on. That was one night that that happened. I, I don't just... remember the I don't remember the coordination at all. Like, were you on my cast, or we were we on separate casts? I think we were the same. I think we were the same. And then, yeah. which flower? Which, which Audrey two did we have? Marlin or Luke? This is just now. This is this is devolved to us just talking. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm fine. <laughs> Luke, I think I had Luke. I can't remember any of the pairings. I can't. I'm pretty sure Joel was my Seymour. It, okay, then I might have had. And Cameron. Beth was my Audrey. Yeah, I was the other one. I think I was Heather and Cameron. Ah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was like, Cameron looks too fucking good to be a Seymour. <laughs> I'm like, we should be switched. But then again, hey, and again, yes, I was crazy, but I was still a woman beater and a villain. Uh, so I can play villain in this role. <laughs> uh, anyway. Yep. <laughs> Back, Jesus Christ Superstar. So, final thoughts. Uh, it sounds like you actually enjoyed it. I did. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Is it my favorite musical ever? No, but mm -hmm. definitely worth the watch. Would recommend to most people and probably have them be like, don't recommend nothing to me again as what the way you're making it sound. Uh <laughs> I'm just saying the way you make it sound like, hey, you should see this. It's like, no. But mm -hmm. do you know? Do you know what Tim Rice also worked on? No. Uh, he was uh, made a made a small, uh, small independent feature uh, called Aladdin. I see. That may be your favorite musical of all time. <laughs> that explains why I guess I enjoyed this one. So yeah. No, he yes, also I... he also was the main musical coordinator for the Lion King. Did see, the score reason, for that? There's a and... reason Disney, you know, was so big in the nineties. And it wasn't just by buying other companies. So that's kind of where his trajectory went off to. Okay. Yeah, no, he does great work. Clearly. <laughs> yeah, clearly. <laughs> and apparently half of the fucking Weber stuff was also him. Yeah. From what you're saying. Well, I mean, yeah, from the early from the early years. 
I... uh, he does the lyrics, mm-hmm. and it's like it's like uh, I, uh, Elton John was that way. Like most of the Elton John songs that you you might know of or you would hear on the radio as like oldies and classics. Elton John didn't write any of those lyrics. He had a lyricist that he always worked with and he just wrote the piano parts gotcha. and then eventually they broke up. Uh, and so everything from like so whatever date, all of the songs that we don't give a fuck about. <laughs> so all the songs that aren't replaying on the radio all the time. Huh. So very similar paths. Mm-hmm. But I'm really glad you enjoyed it. It was, as as I expressed in my little opening spiel, it's, it, it's, it's. Uh, I have a, I have a list of the top ten most important films in my life that I just made because that's the kind of thing that's fun to me. I don't know. And and I suggest anybody at home doing the same. Yeah. I've done a top 20 most important singles of my lifetime. I've done a top 20 most important albums of my lifetime. And I have only done a list of 10 movies. I don't know why I didn't do 20 on that one. Uh, I'm not sure if I could do 20 albums. <laughs> but it is, it is my, it's, it's one of them. It's one of my faves. So I'm really glad you enjoyed it. Thank you, thank you. I, I, I did, I did, and I, and I like the whole sentimental, like attachments to things, making things even more important to you. Like you said, it's one of your favorite movies, but you also have the whole bonding with your mom and it being her favorite thing throughout the yeah. life. So there's the extra nostalgia on top. So and there are mm-hmm. things like that where I'm like, I like this, and then I get older, like, yeah, I like this. Why do I like this? Oh, it reminds me of this, that, that, and the other. Yep. So yeah. Well, that's I believe that's gonna be it for us for this episode. Let's wrap it up, baby. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to find me elsewhere, obviously you can find me elsewhere on this channel. You can also find me elsewhere on YouTube at the Whatever We Want podcast. You can also find me on Twitter and Twitch at Giotavi. That's G I O T A V I V Q V I Giotavi. Also, you can Tavi V. Uh, oh, shut up. Uh, <laughs> You got anything you want to tell the people? Nope. All right. Nothing this time. The moon is made of cheese. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, you guys have a good oh, one. And then gonna... next time. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Adios. <laughs>